Well, welcome back. It gives me great, great pleasure to, to welcome one of my favourite acts onto the stage. A bit of folk music royalty. The last 20 years have been playing for our, our musical pleasure at festivals all around Australia and much loved around the world. Sorry for the slight delay, but they do care about you greatly. That's why they've been tuning and testing and warming themselves up. So please, a warm Illawarra welcome for Cloud Street. Quite warmed up. How are you feeling? Warmed up? Yeah. Yes, the day is doing it for us, isn't it? I was just reading that there's somewhere in western New South Wales. We don't do this sort of stuff in Queensland, of course, but western New South Wales, there's a town where it plummeted to 35.9 last night. <laughs> so this is a song about leaving England to come to Australia. And this joke didn't work yesterday, so I'll try it again. When people were sent to Australia for seven long years' senile pervitude. Thank you, madam. Explain it to the other. Here's a due to all judges and juries. Here's a due to you bailiffs also. Seven years you parted me from my true love. Seven years I'm transported, you know. Oh, see. 
song about dancing and I'm going to use one of the props. It has been provided very kindly to me by Black Joke Morris. <laughs> Unfortunately, although he's probably outnumbered by Black Joke Morris, the squire of Queensland's Bell Swagger Morris is sitting in the second row booing <laughs> at Black Joke Morris. Do you think that's a good idea? You take sides. He's wearing a kilt and I had to point out to him before the show from my vantage point that um, if he's going to dress like a soldier, he needs to sit like a lady. <laughs> this is a song which I actually wrote for the Queensland Morris dancers, but the New South Wales ones are welcome to be jealous. <laughs> it's a song called Dance Up the Sun, although it's oh. recently been renamed as um, the Bell Swagger Anthem. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> No, Stuart, it still sounds like that. <laughs> now, we know that um, Morris dancing is something that many people find it very easy to make fun of. Yeah. Of Me, course. and I do it. <laughs> but it's, um, it, it, is, it does have its serious side, so if, if you or anyone you know has been affected by Morris dancing, then come up and see us afterwards and you can sign up for our new support group, Beyond Bells. <laughs> It's a short experimental piece, we hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh. One, two, now.
all um, evidence to the contrary, it is not too hot to drink at this festival. I was speaking with Ruby last time. <laughs> I don't know if any of you were lucky enough. Um, been, been coming to festivals for a while, and I went to the, the first Mullaney, which became Woodford many years ago, about 500 people. It, was, um, it turned into a, a massive thing. But Bill, who used to run the festival, was very keen to have Guinness at the festival. And so he got on with the, the local Guinness rep in Brisbane. So this is, you know, Easter, so it wasn't too hot. But, and he, um, he would only give them eight kegs because he said, you're never going to sell more than that over a weekend in, in Queensland. And Bill had his mission in life to make this festival quite a big event. And he wanted it to do what it eventually did, which was it appeared on, as a blip on the annual sales figures for Guinness in Queensland. <laughs> and so the, the first attempt to... Um, convinced the guy from Brisbane, the rep, that um, he was wrong, involved Bill coming to us at the festival the night before the festival and said, right, we've got to drink eight kegs of Guinness tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cause dissent in the audience, but Queensland. <laughs> I'm singing a song written by a wonderful man called Grant Bainham. Um, Almost as many words as a Tim Minchin song. Let's see what we can <laughs> Well, there are those who like their wine because it adds sophistication to their hearty meal they're serving to their friends. And there are those who like their wine because it helps in the creation of that party feel on which so much depends. And there are those who like their wine to come from eastward facing chateau on the plateau of Lorraine and all that bunk. Their motives are not mine. I like lots and lots of wine. And I like it cause it gets me drunk. There are those who take a glass because it helps them to relax. They find it helps their social manner to improve. It's a useful scheme I've taken to its ultimate extreme I sometimes get so well relaxed I can't move And there's another kind of fella Drinks champagne to make him mellow And he swears by clique or bollinger and brute Well, I tried some brute myself I found it on the bathroom shelf He was right, it got me mellow as a newt You can judge your To think that it's important what you drink They haven't got an inkling what it's all about They spend their evenings wasting decent drinking time By tasting drops of this and that and spilling it all out They pass the wine along the table They even bother to read the label Muttering things like, what a shame the cork has shrunk or fruity nose or too much tannin when they ought to get a man in who appreciates the chance to get drunk. They spend their time describing what they ought to be imbibing, which is why, of course, although you never think it, for they use words like young but promising, precocious, full of fun, you think they want to adopt the stuff, not drink it. And at a meal, these silly asses have a row of empty glasses, a different wine with every dish they eat. Me, I fix whatever's handy in a stiff old purpose shandy that goes very nice with fish or shredded wheat. You can judge your wine by the quality of the wine. It's kind of bouquet and all that junk, but it all comes back. Falling over fact up And the fact that it makes you drunk There are those who take the glass because No, they're not they're, there are those who take delight Pronouncing all the labels right They roll their arms and do the German glottal me, I couldn't give a monkeys Cause the stuff that gets you drunk Is on the inside, not the outside of the bottle So I had the 
with cheese and wine Invite your friendly Philistine Call me drunken, call me soft or call me wino What do I know? You'll find me in the kitchen I'll be giggling and twitching Having a sop and throwing up across your lino You can judge your wine by the quality of the vine It's colour or bouquet if you insist But it all comes back to the falling of a factor And the fact that it makes you misty-eyed and mellow Makes your mortgage more than miserable and pissed Was that an appropriate thing for a place so close to a wine region? <laughs> or should we just call this a coal region and see if it's okay to sing about wine in a derogatory manner? I'm not allowed to sing about coal in a derogatory manner. <laughs> I know it tastes all of it. <laughs> Playing the concertina is a very technical undertaking. All the buttons make different sounds. I think it's like playing the Rubik's Cube, but noisy. You used to just sit down by the fire and open the case. <laughs> I was explaining to Stuart earlier that I, I come from a generation where getting lucky at the pub on a Friday night meant second prize in the meat tray. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that wasn't Ethan'son. I didn't have microphones when this was built, so I didn't have to... I keep positioning the microphones and realising you need to open the concertina as well. Okay, this is a song about um, a, a prison escape. Imagine being in prison. Now imagine not wanting to be there. And that's pretty much the motivation. In Western Australia, there are a group um, called the Fenian Brethren, and some of them were sent out to Australia, and slowly over time, because of protests back in the UK, um, they were gradually released, and there were half a dozen of them left, and um, they were pretty unhappy about not having been released yet. So one day, they, um, with a lot of organisation, with help from overseas, they escaped from a working party. They met, um, met up with a carriage that had been organised, and that raced them off to the coast. There they were rowed out um, in a rowboat that was ready for them to a ship that had arrived. And the, the masterful feat of um, seamanship that resulted in the ship being there on time involved it coming from the United States and coming to Fremantle Harbour the same day of the regatta. So the ship was, uh, ship was among all the, the boats in the harbour um, sailing back and forth, so they weren't noticed. The missing prisoners were noticed and they eventually figured out, okay, they're on that, that boat, the Catalpa. And so a, a British ship was sent out after them. As they entered the international waters, the Catalpa raised the stars and stripes, which meant they couldn't be fired upon without causing difficulty to that special bond that exists between nations to this day. <laughs> Is that a good intro? Okay. I won't ask them, they no, 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 no. <laughs> Mother? <laughs>
will have to stay. To defend in their country or island, they were chained and transported away. after the shops have closed at 2 o'clock, which is when we got there. Is, is Mums for in Australia a throbbing night spot? Oh, not a night spot exactly, but I think it is a throbbing afternoon spot. But Malmesbury in England, when we went there, was not a throbbing afternoon spot, but it did have one fantastic attraction, and that was Malmesbury Abbey. So we went, because there was actually nothing else to do in Malmesbury, and we checked out the Abbey, where they had a lot of information about Elmer, the flying monk. All the monks in that early part of the Abbey's history were scholars and each one of them had a subject to study and because history was in the making, it was 1160 or thereabouts, um, there hadn't been a lot of research into anything really and so you could start from pretty much anywhere so Elmer decided that he wanted to study birds. Nothing specific about birds, just birds generally and he studied everything he could think of to do with birds including how they flew and when, once he'd done that for a while he went Yep, he probably didn't do it in this accent, but he went, yep, I think I've got it, I'm going to try it. And so he built himself a set of wings out of willow, wax and parchment, and it wasn't until he jumped off the 200-foot tower of Malmesbury Abbey that he realised why a bird needs a tail. <laughs> they don't just use it for wagging, they use it for steering. And so although he was able to fly, he was not able to steer, and when that hill came up and broke both his legs, there was nothing much he could do about it. 
So if that hadn't happened on his maiden journey with his wings, we may have been able to fly much sooner in life, you know, in the history of humanity, because at that point the abbot banned him from ever flying again, which was a bit sad. And so the now crippled Elmer uh, lived for such a long time that he saw Halley's Comet visit the Earth twice and continued to study flying things. He um, probably wasn't offended. Like he's lying there with two broken legs and bits of wings all around him and the abbot says, you mustn't do that again. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was inspired to write a song about Elmer, the flying monk, and this is it. It's on the album, it's called Malmesbury Abbey, but we tend to refer to it as Elmer. Oh. Hang on, hang on, Sylvie's got a camera. Yes, Sylvie's got a camera. Okay. Hi, Sylvie. <laughs> Did you get a picture, Sylvie? Please, no, please. not yet? Okay, great. <laughs> I think we made her nervous by pointing out that we knew she was there. Sorry, Sylvie. <laughs> We'd just like to thank our fabulous billets for having us this year. Put your it's hands just up, such a pleasure. Yay! Thank you. We've had a lot of fun with our billets. I went kayaking with Josie. I went sleeping. <laughs>
So we're just checking out our time and commitments and making sure we, we leave you with a mint. Um, happy sing with tune or song about a bear? <laughs> Both. Bear. 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 Stuart, I'm going to swap my DK again. I'm going to play a different Constituted too, but that requires you to do nothing. <laughs> and I couldn't get hold of a cardboard box to play instead of a drum, so I actually got a drum. It's not very trad, is it? in tune. <laughs> <laughs> that concertina was tuned in 1973 and I've met the man who did it. <laughs> oh, this is a song I wrote when we lived in Mullaney, a um, little town north of Brisbane. Head north, head Caboolture, turn left. Go up, go up the range, it's the first time he comes in. Now, um, back in the day, circuses were a huge entertainment in Australia, and the biggest of them all was Worth's Circus. Yeah. It's based in Sydney. Circuses, Worth Circus. Um, Worth Circus used to travel around Australia on their own train uh, and they featured almost exclusively international acts. So in their day, they were a pretty big deal. When they came to Queensland, they stopped in a little town called Landsborough, down the bottom of the range, and a fella called Bill Sinclair came down the hill with his family. Bill had come from, um, from Glasgow in the late 19th century and he and his wife started a farm um, up on the range. He became known as the strongest man on the range. They say he could, he could lift 100 kilos of grain under each arm when he loaded his wagon. I have no idea if that's true, but it's a great story. <laughs> so this is a song that I wrote about what happened when Bill, went, Bill and his family went to the circus and was offered £10 in cash if he could wrestle the bear. And no, it wasn't a koala bear. <laughs> We will leave you with this one. Of course, we have CDs because the law requires us to carry merchandise at all times. Come listen now, good people here. The story of renown of the day. His gallant crew, they raised the big top high and all the fog for miles around gathered under a canvas sky. And the word you there in the clear night air, when William Sinclair he fought the bear, were you there to see William Sinclair when he wrestled the bear to the ground? There was a black ring monster in a 
Thanks very much for playing a Kaylee tonight over the dance. And if you're interested, otherwise, we'll see you around. Have a great weekend.